Sebastian Middle Martinez, MMA News, here with veteran MMA referee Herb Dean. Uh, so, Herb, you were mentioning before how hot yoga has changed many aspects of your life for better, which is something you just got done doing uh, earlier today. Yeah, yeah, uh, hot yoga is great. Um, it's uh, like, you know, um, like all of us, like uh, I was saying, uh, you we spend a lot of time doing things that uh, – the boring, we don't do the boring stuff. I'm not that guy. I just like to do the, the fun stuff. And uh, uh, for me, uh, you know, you, eventually it takes its toll, and you got to spend some time doing some other things. So uh, there's got there's probably some ratio how much time you spend grappling or doing martial arts as to how much time you should spend doing uh, hot yoga. But I really enjoy it. And uh, some of that uh, fun stuff has been obviously MMA. Uh, you're an MMA, or you were an MMA practitioner yourself. Many people watching this probably know that you had a couple fights. And you were saying how you were mentioning earlier how important it is for uh, MMA referees to have at least some kind of martial arts background. Yeah, uh, definitely. You have to have some sort of martial arts background, uh, especially with you know position and submission. A lot of the movements are counterintuitive, and um, you know you should. Uh, be able to, uh, bottom line is our job as a referee is to prevent any unnecessary injuries. And when these guys are tapping out, they are, at, they are already receiving an injury. So you need to step in with a plan and uh, be in a position to get good information and also be in a position to make a good intervention and to try to help this guy, uh, you know, minimize the da damage that these guys are taking. And what are some of the challenges facing MMA referees as things are today? Because, I mean, obviously some of the most obvious things would be like different states have some different rules sometimes. Uh, instant replay has not been introduced for fighting sequences in some states, not in others. But what would you personally say is the biggest challenge uh, MMA, MMA referees face today? Uh, let's see, the biggest difficulties for MMA referees, well, one thing is, yeah, a consistent rule set. And some of those rules, uh, the rules uh, are will keep a... Uh, keep um, evolving uh, as the sport evolves and uh, there's a lot of little little loopholes that are that are played in the sport and I think that um, now that uh, we've gotten used to doing the sport we can tighten up a lot of the rules to close up some of those loopholes and so I think those are some of the those are some of the difficult things when you know that you're uh, working in an area where the rule set leaves a little bit of wiggle room and how to manage that I think those are, and so some of those, uh, the, uh, because there's a little bit of wiggle room that the athletes can use, uh, and there's also some wiggle room that the referees can use. And so how are you going to, um, how are you going to best uh, evaluate the situation to get the right decision? So I think that that's really difficult. Um, I, uh, yeah, I think those are the, the most difficult things. Also, our, our sport is, it's a three-dimensional sport. It's all over the place. And I've been doing refereeing for almost 20 years, about 19 years. No, no, 2019. So this year will be 20 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, I know that I haven't seen it all. There's always going to be a situation still at this time, after all the things I've done, sometime or another, whether it's this year, whether it's next year, I'm going to have a situation go, you know, it's the first time I've been in this particular situation, and I'm going to have to make a decision Sometimes in a spur of the moment or sometimes or maybe it might be a done on a timeout. The decision will be very fast. So I think that's the uh, the um, the other big challenge for uh, referees is that we have to make a lot of our decisions on a spur of the moment. Uh, even uh, like a lot of um, other sports, there's like a pause and there's timeouts or there's the end of the down and you get time to get things just right or even with uh boxing and and uh, the other combat sports there's there's counts you know where there's no count with mma so i think that's the other big challenge is that you have to make your decisions in a spur of the moment not only that, but sometimes you're calling fights where, for example, one or more of the fighters don't speak English, things like that. How do you go about in such situations where you're speaking to a Brazilian fighter or a Russian fighter and you're trying to communicate to them, but you can't really do it in their native tongue? Well, um, that's, that's where you usually, uh, you know, there's really not that many commands that you use that are going to be done in the spur of the moment. You leave that to the commands. And then uh, some of the, uh, and you go over the other, other commands that you're going to give to them. So you make sure that you're going to have uh, a language that, uh, that you both understand. Whether they, under, most athletes understand the rules in English and they understand the commands in English. If they don't understand the commands uh, in, in that language, then, um, 
usually the referee will give them the commands in, in their language, you know. Uh, there's not that many, so you can brush up a little bit. And you can find some kind of common ground to make sure you guys are communicating properly. Uh, anything else that needs to be more detailed is usually done on a timeout. Uh, there's not, you know, uh, even in English, we're not having detailed discussions with the athletes while they're competing. So I'm not, I'm not going to say anything more than a command. So if anything needs to happen that's not a command, uh, where it's a little bit more detailed, that's done on a break or on a timeout, and uh, we can get an interpreter in there and make sure that they uh, everything's done, you know, that everyone's communicating. Now, we, are, uh, we were sent here to cover UFC 232, where you were supposed to be the referee for Jones versus Gustafsson, but uh, you had to pull out because of an injury. Usually it's the fighters who pull out. Yeah. Uh, every way around this time, uh, if you could, uh, a, lot of our, a lot of our readers were wondering about what, what was happening, since obviously mm -hmm. it's a big, high-profile Swedish fight, and if you could just let the uh, fans know yeah, why, what, what the injury was. Well, I had some muscle stuff uh, in my leg and uh, uh, some, you know, little... Uh, little I don't know if it was pulls or tears or whatnot, but, um, you know, uh, when I was having problems with it, they, uh, uh, I think the, where I was at, the doctor was concerned with it being blood clots, and he didn't have the ability to do an ultrasound, so he, you know, prescribed me some blood thinner, and uh, that didn't help the situation. So it turned to something that would have healed probably in three or four days to something it took a little bit longer for. I'm healed up now. Uh, at the time, I didn't feel, I, I felt better at the, the day of the fight, but I didn't feel uh, absolutely 100%, and I think those guys deserve, you know, some of the referee in there who's uh, 100%. I was about 85%. <laughs> so, you know, so I could walk without a limp, but uh, I, I didn't feel comfortable taking the match. And, you know, the thing about it, awesome thing with California is there's the depth of really qualified officials. You know, it wasn't something to worry about, you know. Yeah. All the officials, uh, you know, are martial artists. All the referees are, you know, high-level martial artists. So, uh, and have a lot of experience because California is really structured. We have a really structured amateur system. And we have, I mean, I think they did, uh, I think, almost like 100, I mean, almost 200 fight, pro fights last year. So... It's a lot of time for them to get experience, you know. Well, it's, of course, very important to be able to be 100%. I mean, Kamaru Usman can do what he does on 30%. Not everyone else can. Uh, you've been in some fights, or you've been you've been refereeing some fights where being 100% is definitely important, uh, where the fighters perhaps have a very wild style or a very aggressive style, or it's just a lot of animosity and we're not always letting go. Some... some Fights that spring to mind are, for example, John Jones versus Daniel Cormier or Alistair Overeem versus Bigfoot Silva, where they just did not like each other. And uh, when you're in those kinds of situations, I think you even took, uh, didn't you almost get struck by John Jones or Cormier in the first yeah, fight? I think, it was, I, I think um, in the match, I think Cormier threw a punch and I, maybe I was in the way. I don't know. You know, but it, it wasn't, a, it didn't hit me a flush I, I can't say that i've been punched by daniel cormier was like, you know i was moving out of the way and he was probably aiming at somebody else hopefully yeah. hopefully <laughs> and uh, so I, I i can't say that i took daniel cormier's punch so but yeah anyway it's some something hit me a little bit yeah and what goes through your mind in those intense exchanges where you know you're trying to get in there and, and obviously the bigfoot silva alistair overheim one as well where you literally had to hold bigfoot back because of you know, he was getting in Overeem's well, face. I did a good job about it. I, I got dragged around by Bigfoot <laughs> for a while, you know. Uh, but, um, I mean, I'm pretty focused on doing my job. I think that, um, you know, I, I, I think that uh, when, you know, when I'm in there to do that job, all I'm thinking about is that uh, the, the athletes have trusted me to, uh, to do that. So when I, when I get in there, I'm going to do my job no matter what. And so I don't really think about, like, oh, whatever the situation may be there's things that i know are right and things i know are wrong and uh that's about it you know have you ever been injured by an mma fighter in a fight um not really i, I mean i've had like a you know like i mean I've, there's been punches i've you know i've gotten away of or maybe maybe i'll put my body in the way of something and some of these guys hit really hard so something like you know something yeah. like you know like a little dead leg or a knuckle noogie or something you might give to a, when it's coming from somebody from one of some of these heavyweights yeah it, you know you might walk a little you have a little limp for a bit but nothing nothing extravagant i think that um uh i think that most that just about all i mean a very 
the highest percentage of our, our athletes in the sport of MMA are very respectful and they're respectful of the uh, of the authority of the officials. You know, oftentimes, whether we deserve it or not, they're very respectful of it. And so uh, I think that I think there's something like a correlation, like the more contact a sport has, the better the athletes act, you know. I mean, when I'm out there and some of these other, I'm around some of these other athletes that are in sports without a lot of contact, man, you should see the way these guys are talking to each other all the time. They're doing this, they're saying that to each other, or, you know, uh, I mean, yeah. So I, I think that the fact that uh, this sport is the closest that it, you're going to get to a real fight, and so uh, I think that. Um, I think that it makes a little something different there, you know, whereas some other athletes might have a lot of aggression that they're not able to get out. They're going to get it out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I, I think, um, so in general, I think our, our athletes are very uh, honorable and respectful people. So I don't have a lot of problems. Well, it's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, you're one of the, as I said, veterans uh, of MMA refereeing. You've been around for, yeah, tw this will be your 20th year now, 2019. But refereeing also seems like perhaps one of the most thankless jobs in the business because people only really care when, you know, there's a controversial decision or something like that. When a referee is doing a perfect job, no one ever mentions anything. Mm -hmm. What's that like to constantly be under the spotlight at the smallest error, but never doing your greatest achievements? Well, I, I don't think it is never during my greatest achievements. I think that that's the case with most sports. But I think that somehow as the fans and as some of the fans are, are, and definitely the fighters, they have a lot of insight into uh, the difficulty in some of the decisions. Uh, I'm not going to say all the time. You know, there's some of the announcers that I've interacted with. Uh, and I'm saying, so man, you guys have been doing this for a while. And I can tell that you still haven't read the Unified Rules document from beginning to end. Maybe you're aware of the fouls, but there's a couple other pages. It's not that thick. You know, it's only three pages. Read the whole thing. You know, so I, I think that... Um, that you know so i think but so sometimes there's things where people don't understand the rule how the rule works but in general i think that we get a lot of respect for doing our job um and um i i think that it's um when i when i am under the gun for it or i'm getting a lot of uh flack or whatnot i, I think that's also a good reset for me because i'm not here for people to like me i have a i have some duties in there that are sacred And, and that's my first responsibility. That's not, it shouldn't be about, hey, people are happy to see me and want to buy me a beer. You know, uh, that's, that's not what I'm here for, to make friends. I'm here to, you know, these people, these athletes take a lot of time uh, from their family and make a lot of, we have a lot of smart people and they've chosen this path where they could be doing anything else. And uh, there's a lot, I'm balancing that with their uh, physical safety. So, I, so I, I'm pretty serious about those responsibilities. So I think, yeah, when people are mad at me, it gives me a nice little uh, readjustment. Like, yeah, yeah, you know what you're here to focus on. All right. Yeah. So um, I think that that um, the, the question was a uh, thankless job, right? Yeah, or it could perhaps be seen as one of the most thankless jobs in it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, no. That, so, so, so. On top of that, it's not always thankless. Yeah. People, people do respect the job we do. All right, well, that's good to hear. I mean, even, even in, in my side of the end, you know, no one cares when you write a perfectly worded article. But if you make mm -hmm. a spelling mistake, you can expect at least 10 comments on it. So. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing about it is, man, we're in a time where, like, everybody, um, everybody has, a, has, a, has a platform and has a voice. And, and, you know, you can say something. And the things that burn the hottest is just the way we're conditioned as animals are things that hurt. People know, like, hey, people pay attention to sharp things. You know, if you don't pay attention to sharp objects, you know, more than to fuzzy, soft ones, you're not going to be around very long. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just just a part of what we are. And so people pay attention to those harsh words. And a lot of people are using them because they know it gets attention. So, yeah. Yeah, there is a lot of that out there. Luckily, most of those harsh words are reserved for perhaps some of the tougher situations. And being in the game as long as you have, you've obviously been in a lot of really tough situations, perhaps situations that are hard to call. What do you feel are some of the toughest or most challenging calls that you've made in your career so far? Um, let me see. The more challenging ones, the, the more... There's a, I, I can't think of any in particular as the toughest, most challenging call. Um, but there, but they, there, will, there are a lot of very challenging calls. Anytime you get in there in, a, in this sport, you know that 
yeah, there's going to be some some really tough ones. Um, but yeah, I, I can't I can't think of any in particular. Uh, I can like, uh, but I'll tell you some things like with with things like the downed opponent rule. Uh, there's a lot of tough calls there, um, you know, because one of the things that uh, referees have to uh, there's there's a different way there's a different flow to the rules if you believe something's intentional or unintentional so that's probably one of the tougher calls we have to make because we have to decide whether we believe it was whether we see reason to believe that uh what somebody did they did it on purpose won the fouls and so then that's it has a whole different uh set of things we're supposed to do after so yeah those calls are often tough are there any calls we're looking where you know when you think back like you know which would have been instant replay on that one um, re instant replay? No, not really that I can think of. In most places, you have, uh, if you don't have instant replay, you have the ability to pull. And so, um, you know, uh, you if it's for a fight ending sequence, the bottom line, yeah, and, and that's the only, I think that's the most appropriate. I can't think of, uh, of a time where I'd want to use replay for something that's not fight ending. Right. You know, uh, I can think of a couple of things that, you know, Maybe you want to bounce around, but that's the safest thing because with mo MMA, and momentum is really important. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you don't want to call time on something you didn't see. And, uh, you know, so that's when we want to use replay for fight ending sequences. And the thing about it is if, uh, if the state doesn't have replay, they usually have uh, the ability to poll. Mm -hmm. So I can, um, you can poll the other uh, officials. You can ask them if, they, if it happened on your blind side uh, because you can't, you can't be everywhere, right? So you're going to have to choose a place to be where you think you're going to see the majority of what happens. But there's going to be a minority of things that happen and on that other side. And, you know, you, if you can't see it, uh, you can always ask one of the other officials, especially if it's fight ending. I think one of the more recent, uh, perhaps controversial situations was uh, actually in Russia uh, with C.B. Dalloway and Khalid Murtazaliev. Uh, some people were critical of a stoppage there, but it, you know, they felt that you know Dalloway wasn't fighting back in any way. And uh, is is that any? Have you heard about any of that criticism? And do you remember that uh, sort of uh, the decision making going about that? Yeah, yeah, I I, I do I do uh, hear some of the criticism. I think um, with that situation was a it was a tough situation because we have a situation where a fighter is not unconscious, and the fighter is exhausted, and um, my job is to. Um, is to keep him from receiving unnecessary punishment. So I have to uh, decide if he's, if he's not intelligently defending himself, but there has to be something to defend himself from. The other guy really wasn't doing anything very effective to him. It was like there wasn't nothing for the guy was maybe hitting him on his leg or hitting him on his arm with not very hard, effective punches. So um, I think I'd had a, there's a situation, I think that's a situation that I probably would do again differently, not stopping it because of uh, of the punishment that the other guy was giving him, just by stopping it because the guy, I believe, his will to fight was done. Right. Okay. So, yeah. You have... I think some people could argue the best seats in the house in an MMA fight. And I mean, I can understand, obviously, you're focusing solely on being a referee, but is there ever any part of you where you get that sort of a fan inside you clicks in to being there inside of a cage inside of a fantastic MMA fight? Not that much anymore. Okay. I mean, sometimes there's things you see something that's amazing. Oh, wow, that was amazing. But um, I, I, the fights that I watch... I, uh, as at, on home on television or just watching the fights that I referee, I, w I watch the fights that I watch uh, without doing my job. I remember better because I'm enjoying them more as a fan. And so it goes into my brain different. Whereas the jobs where I'm actually officiating, I'm focused on a bunch of other things. So I, um, yeah, so my focus is different. One thing that I feel is perhaps most challenging for a sport in itself, and not just for MMA refereeing, it's also a rule set, is perhaps a lack of consistency for fouls. There's been a couple articles on, in how in MMA it kind of pays to cheat because not all referees will, for example, reset to the original position or a fighter will perhaps get a warning for a fence grab when it actually affected the fight. Do you feel that there is enough consistency in the rule set itself? Yes, I, I do because the sport is so, um, the sport is so, so flowing. It's so hard to predict the things that you can put something in concrete and then it's gonna uh, backfire on you. Like 
maybe you might have a suggestion on something you would uh, a rule how you might update it to make it more concrete well i think a lot of people talk about for example eye pokes and that's how many warnings should a fighter get before a point is deducted for example okay, so i'm not asking for a question i'm asking you to rewrite the rule more consistently Okay. So yeah. I'm going to poke holes in it. So I'm going to do you first. Okay. So you rewrite it more consistently, and I'm going to sit back and maybe poke holes we'll say after I might not be able to, but it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Let's well, say after, say, maximum of one warning per round for, for example, an eye poke. Would that be, for example, a legitimate change for you? So when you say an eye poke, describe an eye poke. Well, anything that the referee would consider worth warning the fighter for. One warning. Well, it depends. Like, did uh, did the other fighter have any uh, contribution to it? Well, let's, let's say let's say I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. You don't like that. And you move your head. Well, yeah, I and mean, then maybe okay. Fair could point. That be treated the same way as if I just did this. Yeah, oh, good question. Good question. Some and more. We got a bunch of other ones too. You know, <laughs> what if uh, what if the uh, now when you say warning, what if you? I mean. Does a referee have to be totally sure that it was a poke, or does a referee have to, uh, or just does the guy complain and say it's a poke? Because sometimes yeah. they happen so fast, it's like it's difficult to see, like something like that. Was the fingers extended? Was maybe the fingers curled just a little bit? Was it a fair blow? Was it a, you know what I mean? So, man, the, those eye pokes, that's a really tough situation. Yeah, it is. So, I think the rules have been really, uh, the thing that they've done with the rules to really try to clean it up is actually it's now a foul. It is a foul. It doesn't have to be punished the first time. It is a foul to have your fingers pointed towards the eye. Yeah. So that's the way the rule is written now. So that's uh, given us a lot more, um, uh, putting a little bit more teeth into the rule. So I just think that it's it's a difficult thing to uh, to yeah, deal with because these fingers are open. You know what I mean? So yeah. people have talked about a, a differently designed glove. There's some organizations around the world where it's a bit more curved to prevent. Hand, fingers from going out completely is that something you would welcome for perhaps unified rules i i don't i wouldn't want to i wouldn't welcome anything until i actually tried it and used it in a in a, a lot in a situation you know in mma yeah. because uh you know um grappling with mma gloves on is difficult already even as free as the gloves are it changes i don't know do you do mma uh, yeah. Yeah. So you so you grapple and you do MMA. So you're aware of like how everything changes when you have the gloves on, right? right? Yeah. So I don't know. Um, I wouldn't want to uh, suggest uh, or say I'd welcome a glove until I tried it a lot, you know, or or and people who are uh, who have a lot more fight experience than I have have tried them and signed off on them as well, you know. Well, are there any things in that case that you feel should be changed with uh, the rule set as it stands now? Um, should be changed with the rule set as they stand now. Well, there are some things I won't go into detail about them. You're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to wait until uh, till they come out. But yeah, there's always some rules. There's always rules that we're looking at. I think there always will be rules. I think if you say that this rule set is perfect and there's not uh, and you're not looking for a way to make it better, then I don't think you're doing a good job. So yeah, there's there's rules that that uh that i look at and that i want to discuss with people mm -hmm. but um i think changing a rule is not as simple as just going and changing it and you have to i think the main thing is i think anytime you change a rule i think uh you should move forward with consistently consistency consistency throughout the sport yeah. you know uh, i don't think that uh you'd want a rule that um uh, that is that you know that you don't want it so that we have the situation with the downed opponent now, yeah. where we have three different rules depending on what state you're in. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, what would your aside from the fact that they should train some form of martial arts himself, what would your advice be to aspiring MMA referees or to yeah those who have newly become MMA referees? Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, referee as much as you can, do martial arts as much as you can. Uh, talk to other referees um always the you know try to try to get as much advice as you can um watch tape watch tape of your performance sometimes that you'll when you watch tape of your performance it may be different than you remember and happening in the cage um you know so that uh i think 
that's the one thing is that the experience can give you is that you're always going over something and even uh, or you're going over something you see and you're you'll have a plan for dealing with it when it finally happens, you know. So we've got yoga, we've got MMA competition, MMA refereeing, and acting. Uh, aside from being an MMA reporter, I also have a YouTube channel, Sci-Fi Night. Subscribe today. And uh, you were in the film Monster Brawl. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, that's actually fun because that's the, of all the things that I've got to do, that's the thing that's closest to being acting. Because usually I'm playing myself, I'm being me. And I was playing myself there too. But I got to have a scene where I died. It was fun. Yeah. It was it was hilarious. Spoilers. But yeah, yeah. yeah I'm it gonna, happens I'm, early on. So. Yeah, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell it. Can, can I give a spoiler? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, it was uh, pro wrestling. Uh, monsters were uh, having a monster brawl. Uh, there was this one monster called the Witch Bitch. And uh, she cut my throat with a cleaver. And it was really cool because, like, the, the director gave me the whole, like, dust and, like, your throat's cut. He was, like, talking me through it. And, and you fall through the ropes. And then you die. Yeah. So I had a great time. It was fun. And then I got to watch it. It was really funny. Uh, at the time, um, when I showed it, I showed it my daughter. She thought the first time she watched it, she actually cried because she didn't like seeing my throat get cut, oh, okay. even if it was plain. Yeah. But then she watched it again, and she thought it was funny. Yeah. And would that that kind of open the door a little bit would you consider other types of acting maybe that where you aren't some type of referee uh well i don't think um i i don't i don't think i'm a very good actor so um i wouldn't want to uh, like try to be a, a actor uh compete for roles with like real actors uh maybe if i got to do like maybe some cameo things where it might be uh where it's kind of like i'm a referee like maybe like i'm a judge or something where it kind of makes sense or something like that or or something where i show up out of nowhere and, and i'm being me and it's just comedy or you know things like that like if it was funny of course I, I like to do as many things as i can so i like to have fun but no i i don't think of myself as an actor i've never taken an acting class and um i'm not like uh I like I like to have fun. I like to make jokes and stuff, but I'm I don't think I'm that kind of a a, a ham that you have to be for an actor. Like to really okay. embrace being something that I'm not right then and, and yeah. Well, rounding off then, what would your message be to the fans watching this? Because you know sometimes they don't understand the rules themselves, or you know it's always you know hindsight is always twenty twenty. What is your message for the fans who? you know, watch MMA and have opinions or questions about MMA refereeing? Uh, well, I think, um, for one, I'm going to, uh, for one, you can uh, reach out to me on social media. Uh, the best way to uh, send me a question is through uh, HerbDean.com. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I usually answer questions. Not all of them. Um, and, and I think... Um, I'm going to start uh, being more vocal and uh, explaining a lot of the rules because actually as I'm going through it, I realize that a lot of people, uh, something I do all the time, but I, I, as I realize a lot of people uh, would like some clarification. It's not something that's, it's something that's actually exciting to people. People want to understand more of like our process or what we're thinking and why we make our decisions. So uh, like I came over here and did this today uh, and I uh, plan to do more things like this and to do more things on my own little platforms. Uh, my social media and whatnot. Okay. Well, perfect answer and perfect segue. So you guys can go to HerbDean.com and you can follow Herb on Twitter and Instagram on what's your handle? Uh, yeah, HerbDeanMMA. Uh, I'm, uh, so also I, I have a referee course that I do. So I, uh, it's a referee training. It's a lot of fun. We come out and we hang out for three days. Uh, we do judging, refereeing, and then we have a day where we do a um, – where we uh, have a uh, live sparring, and so it's the practical. So we go over it, and we set it up, and it's in a cage, and we do, we have, uh, we run it like a small MMA event. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, for those aspiring to be an MMA referee yourself, you've just witnessed an interview with one of the best and most veteran referees in the business. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. My pleasure.